How's it going everyone? It's that Blue Bath here and welcome back to the channel and another video. Now today is part four of Project SBJ and I know it's been a while since I've made another episode in this series but today is the day. Now a few people have asked me, that Blue Bath, have you sold the Abarth? Because we haven't seen it in a little while but don't worry it's still here and it isn't going anywhere. Not for a long while anyway. Now for today, I have a few little bits and bobs to show you guys and a few little Lamborghini parts that I've added to the car to continue the SVJ styling. And I have actually changed a few things that, well, I think you guys might like and it was a few things that needed doing. And so without any further ado, let's get started with part four. Started. Is it me? Or does the car look extremely shiny? I mean, it's never looked so good on camera, but I guess that's just the result of hard work and a lot of polish and wax. But let's get on to the main topic, and that is the new additions to the SVJ. And how about we get started with something on the bonnet? Because it's pretty awesome. So the first addition to the Abarth SBJ is this, the 63 decal. Now, if you're a bit confused as to why I've added this, then let me explain. A few years ago, Lamborghini decided to make a very special version of the Aventador, that being the 63 edition. Now, what does the 63 mean? Well, it just means how many of the Aventador were made. So 63 is a very small number and well, these are very rare additions. I've never actually seen one. Even on the supercars in Monaco videos, I've just never seen this version of the Aventador, hence why it's so rare. Now, the 63, I believe, also means something to do with the year 1963, though I could be wrong on that. There will be text on the screen to reveal what it actually means, but I do know that the 63 is just the quantity of how many of those Aventadors were produced. It was also available in a very nice colorway, that being a white base, black roof, and bronze accents. Now, of course, with this being podium blue, we couldn't really go with the same color that was on that particular Aventador because the 63s, I believe, were in bronze. And of course, with that being a rather dark color, you wouldn't really see it against the blue. So, because we've also got some yellow accents, we decided to go for yellow on the bonnet. The 63s were also on the doors too, but of course, because the SVJs are there, we don't want to overload the side profile and have too much. So I've only gone I've gone one for the bonnet. Now, if you're wondering where I bought this decal from, it's none other than Concept Graphics. I really hope I got that right because I have got it wrong a few times. So I do apologize if I got it wrong the third time. But if you need any custom graphics made or just anything at all, head straight to them because they smash out of the park each and every time. If you need something made, they'll get it done for you and they'll sort you out. So they made two of these 63 decals. One of them is spare and then of course one of them is on the bonnet. And I do think it looks fantastic, especially finished off in yellow. You can really see it and it does work with the blue paint. Blue and yellow is quite a nice color combination. And of course it definitely works for the SVJ styling because the SVJ is also in yellow. So of course, with making a Lamborghini edition, it'd be rude not to buy some Lamborghini center caps. And that's right people, I've only gone and done it I've bought some. Now, I'm actually quite shocked that I was able to purchase some Lamborghini caps for this car. I mean, it's not exactly something you would think of buying or getting for an Abarth, but thankfully, a company out there decided to do exactly that, and I've been able to source some and put them on the bowlers. What do you guys think? I really think it makes the wheel and adds a lovely bit of gold accent to the car. I mean, of course, we've got a nice array of colors on this car now, yellows, reds, chrome, carbon, but a bit of gold 
is also very nice to have. I mean, it's quite subtle as well. It definitely shouts at you, but not too much. I think the other center caps we've had on this car were a bit too colorful. Therefore, it draw it decided to uh, draw your eye to them first because they were very well vibrant. But I think now with having a very nice subtle center cap, you get to see it, but not be distracted by it, if that makes sense. I apologize if it doesn't, but basically what I'm trying to say is, this is a lot nicer and it definitely suits the wheel more. There's too many colors, I just don't think it works with gloss black, so having gold and black is a much nicer color combination. Much easier on the eye as well, I think, but just looks fan dabby doozy. And of course, it's a Lamborghini wheel now, which is so, so sick. And I, I can't believe I've got that. That is so cool. It also reminds me a little bit of the Diablo GT wheel, which is also awesome as well, because that car is phenomenal. So there we have it, a full Lamborghini setup for the wheels. <sighs> can't believe I got to say that. That is just so amazing. But let's move on to some other amazing additions. So here we are at the rear end of the Abarth, and you'll probably notice that one major thing has changed. And you're probably wondering, that blue Abarth, where's the F1 light? It's disappeared. And you would be correct on that because it is no longer on the car or the diffuser. Now, why have I done this? Well, mainly for two reasons. One of them being, it didn't really suit the Lamborghini style because it's more of a Ferrari thing. I mean, for example, the 488 Pista has an F1 light on the back of its diffuser. So I feel like it's kind of suits that more than it does an Aventador. Now, the Aventador on its rear end has a bit of honeycomb on it. So this definitely suits it more and adds to that Lamborghini design, style and image. Now, you're probably also wondering, well, you had to cut the honeycomb out to add the F1 light. So how have you got it back? Well, the legend himself and I decided should we try and revive the old diffuser, make it look nice and add something else in the middle, or should we just buy a whole new diffuser? Let's do that. And that's exactly what we did. I got on the phone to my local Fiat dealership, slash a bath as well, ordered one from Italy, from a bath themselves, picked it up, got it straight on, and wow. What difference a brand new part makes, honestly. When I first got it on there and me and the legend himself stood back, it was a night and day difference between the old one and the new one. As the old diffuser was sort of showing its age, there's a few marks here and there. It wasn't tatty, but you know, it was just kind of a bit, you know, I'm struggling to find the words, Bruh. but I think you can kind of guess what I'm trying to say. So having a new one on here is just so nice. It's fresh, not a single mark on it. And of course, we've got a fresh new brand spanking honeycomb. And I shall not be doing anything to that, guys. Believe me, that is staying as it is. So £170 is all it costs, which I don't think is bad for a brand new part. So I'll take that. I mean, I don't mind at all, especially if it's this nice. Now, we do still have the matte black uh, lip insert as well. And we will be getting the carbon back for that too, the forged carbon. But the legend himself did strip that off that just for now because he does want to have another go at that in the future because he just wants to see if he can get it a bit better than he did before. Though, legend himself, Dad, if you're watching this, he did an amazing job, 10 out of 10. But if he does want to do that again in the future, then that's perfectly fine because, hey, who knows? I mean, it will just be nice to have that back. But Matt Black is still quite nice for the moment too because, of course, it suits the diffuser and it's quite subtle, quite nice. But... In the future, I think we will have that back again, so that would be great. But talking of forged carbon, we do have it on the light inserts once again. Now, uh, I did actually purchase some carbon fiber, just normal gloss black carbon fiber light inserts of Amazon, and I will make a separate video on those uh, maybe later this week. I wasn't very happy with them, surprisingly enough. They didn't really look that good. So, the legend himself had a very awesome idea to use those as a template, cut them out, and then use forged carbon instead. And oh, wow, honestly, what a job he did. Just, it was absolutely amazing to just watch him go ahead and do all this really, really precise cutting out with a, a little blade. And wow, it, it was quite fantastic to watch actually. I guess 40 years of experience on cars really does help. So I tried it before, didn't really go well. But Bruh. there we have it, forged carbon back on the lights again. And I just love how they pop in the sunlight. That forged pattern, you can really see it when the sun hits. It just looks gorgeous. But for now, that is everything on the rear end or the new additions anyway. Let's move on to some more carbon fiber. 
So I just had a chat with a very nice lad. He owns a really nice Clio, actually. And uh, he, he wants a uh, Volvo C30, which is definitely a good shout. And I really hope you get that, buddy, if you're watching this, because they are awesome cars, especially with that five-cylinder. But he said there might be a car show on here soon. Who knows? I'll have to... Uh, We'll have to see what happens. That would be pretty awesome. But yeah, so moving on to the next bit, which is a more carbon fiber. So we've got carbon fiber pillars, which is definitely a welcome addition to this car because it's actually a win-win situation, mainly because you get some, well, awesome carbon and it protects it from the weathering. Because one problem I see with a bus is that the pillars sort of get a bit tatty over time and get a bit weathered. So putting this on it protects it from all of that and obviously makes it look insane and awesome. And I really do love it. And of course, it's not only on the B pillar, it's also on the A pillar, which is conveniently being <laughs> blocked by the wing mirror. So let me just get you off the camera there. And there we go. Now you can see the lovely, awesome A pillars also finished off in glossy carbon fiber. Doesn't that look just great? I mean, the whole pillar kit itself is phenomenal superb outstanding oh, chef's kiss for that one that's for sure guys but that is super nice i mean take a look at the glossy effect on there that is just so realistic i think that is just utterly amazing and it feels really nice too actually and if we step back look at that now we have a full glossy effect on the side profile and i just think that is really really nice touch because before there was a bit of you know matte plastic and you know gloss and a bit of matte black wheels of course but now we have a full glossy setup and i think that is just gorgeous to look at and of course now the pillars shine as well and they also have that mirror effect so 10 out of 10 so here we are in the interior and I actually have done some bits and bobs in here and added a few nice changes. The first being, can you guess what it is? That's right, more carbon fiber. So the carbon fiber in question is located on the middle of the steering wheel. And I really do love this. This is such a nice change and it's right in front of me. So I get to look at it all the time whilst driving. Now the Competizione steering wheels are gorgeous. They are so, so nice in their design, especially with all the carbon fiber across the sides and the bottom of the top. The Alcantara in the later Competizione models, whew, what a design, hey? But I thought to myself, instead of maybe buying a full Competizione steering wheel, why not just do it myself and add a few bits to it? So starting off with this ring across the middle, I'm hopefully going to get some more in the future, maybe for the outer ring, and then like Competizione across the dials and stuff like that on the steering wheel, the ring and the bottom. So who knows? But for now, this is a really nice change and addition. Oh, I do love it. I really do indeed. So for the rest of the interior, in the edit, you'll see on the other side, I've added an SVJ decal to the dash. And I think that it really goes well with the 500. I still don't know why 500 is put into these cars when it says 595 on the exterior. So I don't know why that is the case, but having SVJ next to it just gives it that special feel, I guess, that special edition um, effect. I, would just, I was gonna put a Lamborghini decal next to it, like the badge, but I thought, you know what? The SVJ will do, that's fine. And I think it looks better because it's bigger, bolder, it's colorful, and it just draws your eye, it really does. So ladies and gentlemen, that is everything for today and part four of Project SVJ. Hey, that rhymed. I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. But I think in future, a few more bits of carbon fiber, forged carbon fiber as well, will be added. And um, I'm not really too sure. I do have a few ideas in mind, but I'll keep them to myself for now. And you guys will have to stay tuned to see what comes for the bar but that is everything for now if you'd like to see any more parts to the project svj series or anything at all on this channel whether they be cadwell park car reviews which i've actually got a few lined up and they will be coming this weekend so you guys will have to uh ha be on the lookout for them because i've got some awesome cars for you guys i can't wait to record them but you guys know what to do if you want to see them as soon as it comes out. Hit that bell, like, comment, and subscribe, all of that good stuff, because it's always appreciated. And you guys will have to let me know uh, what you think of those edits at the start of the video. I'm trying to like do more professional edits and stuff like that, you know, with the black bars and the transitions and stuff. Just let me know in the comment section down below. Do you like them? I really do. I think it adds to the video. But for now, I'll see you in the future, guys. Have a good one.